Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, God's Church of Love Online. We wish you a merry, blessed, prosperous, safe Christmas, full of the love of God and the peace that passes all understanding. Merry Christmas, everyone. And we are getting ready to get into the message. We're celebrating our Lord and Savior. This is the Christmas holiday. We're celebrating his love. We're celebrating his joy, all that he's done in our lives, all that he came to the earth to do. Goodwill towards men. All right, I'm going to read some scriptures. We're going to Luke chapter 2, and then we'll go to, uh, let's see, Isaiah chapter 9, and then 2 Chronicles 7, 4, 13 and 14. All right, Luke chapter 2, and we are going to verse 8. We're just going to read a few verses here. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Sorry, y'all, but I listen to the Messiah every day, all year round. And that's the song that popped in my head this morning. So, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all those things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now, one of the things that we find I love about God, he not only warns us of bad things coming, but he also lets us know that there are good things coming as well. And what I want you to understand is when G the first advent of Jesus was a great, glorious one. It was beautiful. Imagine how, how magnificent that night must have been, how the vision of those angels must have been, how, how scary and exciting at the same time. Sometimes what happens is when we get a promise from God, it's sometimes so good it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that God is really for us. And one of the reasons for that is because it, some of us think that God is an ogre waiting for us to make the first little mistake so he could raise his big gigantic foot and stomp us out the way we would a roach or an insect. But God really loves us. And one of the hardest things for us to realize is how much he loves us. But one way that you can remind yourself is by remembering that indeed God is love in itself. God is love. He is love, y'all. He is the personification of love. He is the fulfillment of love. He is the origination of love. God is love. 
And Jesus is his expression of his love. All right. So what I want to share with you real quick, we're also going to go to Isaiah chapter 9. I want you to go with me there. This is going to be a short message because it's Christmas. Everybody's getting ready for the holidays. And I know how that is. All right. So starting at verse 6. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Verse 6, 7, and 8. <laughs> For unto us is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace. How many of you have ever experienced the peace of God? This is Pat's two cents interjecting as usual. How many of you have experienced God counseling you, God warning and, and letting you know what's coming in the future, letting you know his promises of blessing? How many of you have experienced the wonderful side of his nature God is wonderful. He's our counselor. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting father. He's our prince of peace. When you're in God's will, you feel peace. It is a beautiful feeling. Peace is freeing. Peace is restful. It's a beautiful experience. Let's go to verse seven. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Verse eight, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob and it hath lighted upon Israel. You know, God's promises are sure. You can take his promises to the bank even if you don't have money to take to the bank. One thing I always say, when you have the favor of God, it's worth more than any kind of money you can have in your pocket. Why? Because with God's favor comes every possible blessing under the sun, which means what you don't have, favor can bring to you. Let me share a few little lightweight examples. One time, I was, I just, I had been in the house for like two or three months straight. I had only gone out to, to, to buy a few groceries. And I had not been out, hadn't intermingled with people out in person, just online or on the phone. And I just needed to get out amongst God's people. Just get around, just get out in the world, look at the sky and park my car and walk into a restaurant. If I didn't have money to do anything but sip some coffee. And I said, maybe I'll have enough change to be able to, to, to pull up a scoop of ice cream. I just wanted to be around people. And when I sat there, here's the favor of God. These two young men, they were staring at me. They had to be in their twenties. They were staring. They kept looking around and then they talk and then they look around and they talk. And I was like, wow, I must, I must look like somebody they know. So I'm sitting there minding my business. And one of them gets up and walks over and says, excuse me. And I said, yes. He said, I just want you to know, it, order whatever you want on the menu. I just feel like God wants me to bless you. Get an extra meal and take it home. I didn't have the money to buy a meal, y'all, but I wanted to be at a restaurant, just relaxing. These guys more paid for my meal. They paid my bill and told me, add to it whatever I want to buy. So I was able to order both while they were there, and then they went up and they paid for it. And that's something, that's favor. I didn't have money, but I had God's favor. Think about that. Another time, I didn't have the wherewithal to get a battery to put in my car. 
And this young man pulls up behind me when he sees my car stalled, pushes me over around to park on Lake Avenue, gets out of the car, says, would you like me to look under your hood? He looks under my hood, finds out my battery is just dead. He said, oh, no. He said, you need a new battery. He, listen, listen, you guys, what I didn't have a way to get anybody to me or get to anybody, and I didn't have any money in my pocket, but I had a Sears credit card. That man offered to take me to Sears in his van all across from Lake Avenue all the way out to Rosemead. That's a 10 to 12 minute drive. One way. Wait for me at Sears to get my battery. And I had to go to Sears because I had a credit card with them. Other than that, I wouldn't have been able to get a battery. So I was able to get a battery with Sears. I was able to come back from Sears because he drove me all the way back to my car. He raised the hood and put the battery in and made sure my car ran for about a good 15, 20 minutes before he, he left. That's the favor of God. See, when God is for you, who can be against you? When God is for you, Things work out in your favor. Doesn't matter what's coming down the pike. Doesn't matter what's coming against you. It doesn't matter how dark and gloomy the storm clouds look. It doesn't matter what trials and what challenges rise up in your daily life. God has a way of escape for you because you have God's favor. You may not have money jangling in your pocket. You may not have a bank account that's loaded that's packed full of nuts. But guess what? You have God. And if you have God, you have everything you will ever need in your life. You're crying. Somebody hurt your feelings. The boss treated you bad on the job and humiliated you. You can walk to the restroom. They can't follow you in there. You can go in the restroom, lock the stall and say, Lord, take the hurt out. I don't want to waste my emotions on a dingbat that just doesn't like me for whatever reason. Take the hurt out and replace it with your everlasting peace. Fill me with your joy. I am not going to waste my emotions on somebody else's nonsense and immaturity. And boom, within minutes, within seconds sometimes, all that emotion is gone. And you come out Spirit lifted, all that heaviness is gone. Why? You had God's favor and he immediately ministered to you to remove the contaminants of the sourness that's in other people's spirits. When you have God's favor, you are impervious to the crap in this world. Even though you have to go through it, even though you have to deal with ugly people and their ugly spirits, their ugly attitudes, their ugly treatment treatments, and their ugly words. God can shield you from it all. He is your raincoat. He is your, your pair of boots. He is your hat, your umbrella, your everything. He keeps you warm in the cold weather. He keeps you cool in the hot weather. And I'm talking on the inner man because he is your covering. He is your shield. He is your tower high. He is your refuge. He is your place to run and hide. He is your protector. He's got your back. He paves the way ahead of you. He makes the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. God is your all in all. My question to you, do you run to him when you need him? Or do you bow to the beggarly elements like cussing somebody out? when they humiliate you? Do you bow to the beggarly elements like bringing out your baseball bat to go upside somebody's head? Or do you handle things God's way so that you can always live under the umbrella of his favor, the ark of safety? What do you do with life when life does wrong stuff and bad things to you? What do you do with it? How do you handle it? Remember who your savior is. 
remember and then understand the scripture that God tells us. Because see, a lot of times we think we have to reach down to our own little schemes, our own little things. And, you, and I tell you what, you let me handle this. I got this. No, hands off, baby. Mouth shut. Back away. Back away from the problem before you make it explode on everybody. And I'm going to read Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 because no matter what's going on in our lives god is the answer listen to this y'all if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locust to devour the land i'm sorry y'all i gotta stop i i'm i gotta see if i'm recording yes i am okay i'll edit that if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Listen to that. That's a problem. Those are That's a list of problems right there. Sometimes the devourer comes in. Sometimes sickness comes in. Sometimes storm clouds come into your life. Verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Let's stop there real quick. That's a condition. You humble yourself. You don't rise up and act just as ugly as your enemy does. You pray. You ask God for help. You talk to God about the situation. You ask him to help you through it. Because you're too weak and you understand that and you don't want to make a messy situation worse. You seek his face because you know he's the one you got to lean on. Why? Because he is your strength, not you. He is your wisdom, not you. Check that out. And turn from their wicked ways. You choose to do what's right when other people are doing wrong by you. You choose to forgive when other people are treating you with spite, mistreating you, lying on you, falsely accusing you, holding things back from you, stifling you, making a butt and joke out of you. But you choose to do right by them in spite of all of that. So. Let me read that again. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Do you know when God talks about healing your land, that's your inheritance, baby. That's every promise coming down the pike straight from the Bible, straight from God's mouth. Every promise he gave to Abraham, we have access to it. But the choice is yours and mine if we choose to receive those promises. If we choose to walk under the umbrella of his blessing, under the ark of safety, we choose to live in his ways, do things his way, think his way, feel his way, pray and seek his face. Do right by people who do wrong by us. Are we going to benefit or are we going to swim in the cesspool of everybody else's mess? What are we going to do? Are we going to swim in the cesspool of our own mess? Are we going to raise up the old man from the dead and act a butthole because we can, because we're grown? Because we got the right to express ourselves. What are we going to do? Seek his face, baby. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let God heal your land. Let God bless your life. Let God prepare a way ahead of you and cover your back at the same time. Let God be God and every man a lie. You hush your mouth and you lean on God to defend you. You hush your mouth and lean on God to vindicate you. 
You forgive and let God take vengeance on your enemies. And don't celebrate it. Pray for your enemy. You hear me? Be the child of God that God wants you to be. And how do you know how to do so? Watch the example of our Lord and Savior, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. That's, that's what you look at. You look at the example of Jesus Christ that he set before you as he walked this earth. You watch how he did things. You watch how he spoke up. You watch how he was quiet when God led him to be quiet and not defend himself. You watch how Jesus dealt with every crazy obstacle in his life. And there lies your example. And you try your best to follow his path. You try your best to follow his example. And guess what? As you imitate his character, his characteristics, his behavior, his words, his everything, his love, guess what? You've got God's favor working in your life. And you don't have to beat yourself over the head, pulling your hair out by the roots, trying to figure out how to handle this, that, or the other. All you have to do is look up and say, God, help me. Seek his face, y'all. Enjoy the favor of God in your life. You never want to be on his bad side. So let's endeavor and strive to enter in, to stay, live, and abide on his good side. And let that be a reminder to you through this whole holiday season. Some of you have relatives you haven't spoken to. You know it's time to reconcile, don't you? It's time to forgive. It's time to let bygones be bygones. Let it be gone. Just pass it by and say, okay, that's water under the bridge. Let's start anew. You may not want to be somebody's ace, boom, coon, their buddy, their running buddy, eat out every day. But guess what? You can still forgive because forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you to be free. And as long as you forgive others, God will forgive you. Amen? All right. Have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. Have a good pig out. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And think about those people who are lonely, those people who don't have anybody to eat with, those people who don't have family visiting them. Go to them. Invite them over to your house to feast with you. They might be a little odd. They might be a little quirky, but they're still God's people. Amen. As long as they're not dangerous. As long as they're not one of those people, when you invite them in, you can't get them out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the bottom line is share the love, y'all. Spread it all over as far as you can in a safe manner. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas and a blessed New Year.